We're moving into intellectual assessment, which I know you guys are all excited to be here about. Um, I know I, this is one of my favorite cartoons. I just thought I'd put it up there. Why? Because I do this all the time. All right, so um, defining intelligence. Ralph Marnay defines intelligence as learning from experience, which means that I'm probably not very intelligent. Oh, wait. Uh, the, and isn't the definition of insanity doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results, right? All right. Uh, so solving problems through, wait, oh, insight. Hmm? And uh, adjusting to new situations and focusing and sustaining one's ability to achieve a desired goal. I agree, sure, that, that sounds right. That's a good way of defining intelligence. Uh, very brief history, let me give you a, a very quick history lesson. Uh, G, going back to your study for the boards, how many of you guys remember Spearman's G? Yeah, I, uh, I, I is suddenly glazing over. Okay, so, <laughs> um, so there's this huge debate uh, whether we can identify G, intelligence, with a single number. Neuropsychologists throw out FSIQ. We just throw it out um, because we don't think it's meaningful at all. We look at performance, nonverbal abilities versus verbal abilities. We look at processing speed, attention, concentration, and memory. We look at all of those different domains and don't really look at the summarized G, so to speak. Um, however, it isn't a bad number, and in many, many areas, it's a number that we have to have. And we will get to those areas uh, probably in the second half of today. But Spearman uh, was one of the very first to talk about intelligence. And he thought of it as this, in, in essence, cosmic pool of energy that all of our cognitive abilities come from. Uh, he wrote, uh, General Intelligence Objectively Determined and Measured in 1904. And he suggested that all of this energy is, uh, can be summarized by one number. Bonnet came along in 1906, and he was actually funded by the French government who wanted to differentiate between children who were normal and inferior. Uh, so Bonnet created the Simon Bonnet scale, which evolved over the years to the Stanford Bonnet, which is now the Stanford Bonnet 5. Uh, but this was only really based on a G type of global score that was atheoretical in, in approach. Thurstone and his wife, who never gets any credit all at all, that's why I leave her up here, uh, in 1938 were funded um, by the government because of World War I that was throwing lots and lots of money into psychology because of the war effort. And they wanted to really figure out how do we test the troops. And they developed um, theories of multiple intelligences. Specifically, they wrote the vectors of the mind multiple factor analysis of the isolation of primary traits. Nice book, a little light reading at night. Um, David Weschler came along in 1939 and created uh, the first type of waste tests. And it rose to the top above the Stanford Bonnet and became one of the best known tests and is still used today. Cattell in 1941 proposed what, you guys, from your licensing exams? That's right, fluid and crystallized intelligence. <laughs> uh, I, I see the eyes rolling back in your heads now. Okay, that's important. Hold that. Fluid intelligence, crystallized intelligence. Hallmark of dementia. There you go, there you go. Um, Horn in 1966 revised Cattell's theory. He was a student of Cattell, and Cattell's theory was almost lost, except for Horn came along and made it bigger. Um, Woodcock Johnson, 1977, provided their first test, which was also based on G-type, global scores, and then Carroll comes along, 1993. Now this is important, because Carroll thought, you know, maybe this Cattell guy had something. And so he went back and he researched and he researched and he researched. 
and he did this massive factor analysis summarized in Human Cognitive Ability, a survey of factor analytic studies, and he built on it. And he looked at all of this actual data that was out there and identified the CHC theory, the cattell horn carroll theory. This is important because this is the theory the new generation of intelligence testing is based on. All of them. All of our new intelligence tests are based on or tied back to CHC theory in some way. Going back to the ideas of crystallized intelligence and fluid intelligence and breaking them down into different domains. And Carroll hypothesized that um, after Cattell's original manifesto, so to speak, he came up with different types of intelligence, broad and narrow domains. And we're going to talk a little bit about that today and how that feeds into uh, specifically the Weschler system. But the Woodcock Johnson, the Stanford Binet, all of the Weschlers and uh, the KBC uh, are based on CHC theory, which is three stratums, the overall G, the broad cognitive domains under which lie narrow cognitive domains. I printed this out. You might have it on the next page. I made a big slide for you guys so you can read it. Um, Dr. McGrew, incredibly approachable man, very, very nice, amazing website, psychometrician mind that is amazing. Uh, and so if you visit his website, you will get a lot more of the theory uh, behind the psychometrics of the CHC theory, all right? Uh, and this is kind of a breakdown of what CHC means. Specifically, let's go into it for a little while. Fluid reasoning. <coughs> Fluid reasoning, um, or GF, covers fluid intelligence. It's inductive and deductive reasoning with materials and processes that are new to the person doing the reasoning. Uh, it is based on a number of different things, but it is often thought of as the number one that is just synonymous with G. It's really the, the reasoning process. GC, which is comprehensive knowledge, or crystallized intelligence um, is general knowledge, vocabulary, old school learning, that information that's been with us for a while. It's also thought to have in information and concepts that are culture specific. Okay? So coming back to cultural competency, oftentimes um, this is what's being measured. Um, and if someone is uh, not acculturated, we will see this in the Weschler system specifically for a verbal comprehension index, we might see a lower VCI because someone's not acculturated, right? And when we're talking about that, we're really talking about their GC, their crystallized intelligence. So that would be when we uh, start looking at other areas of functioning to really look at what are their abilities with regard to attention, concentration, memory, etc. Visual processing, GV, um, is in essence just basic visual processes. Uh, GV doesn't include the aspect of dealing with novel stimuli or applying novel mental processes such as uh, GF, for instance. Um, both of them deal with nonverbal abilities, but GV is really the visual memory component. Uh, GA is auditory processing such as recognizing similarities and differences between sounds and recognizing degraded spoken words, such as words that are omitted or separated. It's phonemic awareness skills. This is incredibly important when we're talking about learning disabilities, which we'll get to in a little while. GS, cognitive processing speed. Is really just that, it's cognitive processing speed, measuring someone's uh, clerical speed and accuracy. Automatic and fluent performance, relatively easy, overlearned elementary cognitive tasks, especially with higher mental efficiency. Uh, so we'll see this in speed of reasoning, reading speed, writing speed, perceptual speed. 
GT is decision and reaction speed. Um, it's the ability to make decisions quickly. Uh, vigilance tasks, uh, such as the continuous performance tasks that we use when we're uh, assessing someone that might have ADHD, that's what we're looking at. Right? And someone with ADHD may have deficits in this area. And then we're looking at short and long-term memory, which is G GSM and GLR. And then the ability versus achievement, so reading and writing and quantitative knowledge, which we'll get to a little bit later when we're talking about achievement testing. And then other domains that they don't really have good means of uh, testing just now, especially with our formal IQ tests, but uh, uh, they're good. The two that I wanted to highlight, the differences between psychomotor ability and psychomotor speed. Uh, psychomotor ability is really just the gross and fine motor abilities, whereas uh, psychomotor speed um, has to do more with writing speed, speed of limb movement, speed of articulation, movement time. Uh, so you would see that with something like um, a finger tapping test. <coughs> Bless you. Intellectual assessments with adults. All right, so the Flynn effect. Ah, the Flynn effect. You had to know this for licensing, too. It's the rise of average intelligence quotient over time, usually three points each generation. Um, it is, the effect also has been reported for other cognitions such as semantic and episodic memory. Semantic and um, IQ tests are renormed periodically and because of that, to, to be at the uh, standard score of 100. Right there. Um, I just wanted to touch on it here because uh, this is one of the reasons that we have a new test coming out every 10 years. That and it makes the company lots of money. Um, <clears throat> uh, and these are some of the reasons that they thought as to why, why we have uh, this Flynn effect. I also included this and I blew it up so that you would have a big picture of it. Why? So you can hang it on your wall like I have on mine. Yeah. Yes, I'm a testing nerd. Uh, I love <laughs> having this just to reference because it is the bell curve. It's what things are based on, right? Um, and it also has not just uh, the Z and uh, T scores, but also the Weschler and the uh, Stanford Binet in case you're using that. 